Hey guys, it's Ryan here. Um, quick disclaimer for this episode. We were in Las Vegas and we decided to day drink for this episode. So we are a little uh, crunk as they say. Um, so forgive me if the episode is a little loose. I mentioned it several times how loose the episode is. And it's because we all can barely concentrate after watching the two hour long movie National Treasure and giving an amazing commentary to that. You can find that commentary on our website, WrestlingNinjaStudios.com. It is an amazing one. Before we get into it, I did also want to give you guys a good recommendation. I know we're all stuck in quarantine. So if you guys did want to listen to another podcast, which I'm sure you guys have a lot of time for, and you're a big horror fan, or if you hate horror films even, either way, I have a podcast for you. It's called Too Scary Didn't Watch. It's a horror movie recap podcast hosted by Emily Gonzalez, Henley Cox, and Sammy Smart. Each week they have a horror fan tell a horror phobe all about a movie that they're too scared to watch. It's actually awesome, really interesting. I didn't want to watch Midsommar, but um, their first episode is on Midsommar, and I gave it a listen just to check them out. And it was a great description, and I could I, I vibed really well with the people that didn't want to watch it. And she gave a uh, the, the person who hosted that episode gave a fantastic recap of the movie. Um, I felt like I watched it myself. Um, they're available wherever you can get podcasts or at too scary didn't watch dot com. Too scary didn't watch with. Emily Gonzalez, Henley Cox, and Sammy Smart. Go check them out. Um, you're about to hear the podcast theme song two times. One is the official new podcast theme song for This Is How We Feel. And the second one is the loosey-goosey one we did right before we started recording. Again, I apologize for this episode. Have a great time. This is how we feel. This is how we feel. This is how we feel, this is how we feel, this is how we feel. <clears throat> this is how we feel, 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 this is how we feel. That was great. That was great. That was great. All right. All right. High five for a new era. Season. Number ten, new season. Okay, welcome to this is how we feel. I'm your host Ryan Diaz. I'm joined by my two beautiful guests. Say your fucking names. Oh, I'm Louis. Hi guys. <laughs> what up? It's Baby Jizzle. <laughs> and we are here to talk about National Treasure. Before we get into it, let's hear it from Taylor. Taylor, spit that shit about whatever show is on right now. I don't know what you're. Oh wait, yeah, actually, over, right? she's not able to. Well, the Bachelor is over. Oh, so um, you do that new that love. Yes, love is blind. Love is that blind. thing she's oh, gonna do. Yes. She's gonna do the new. No, she's not gonna do. Love is blind. Love is blind is a really. But good one, she is going to do. Um, um, she's love gonna Island? be. She's gonna be doing a new. Um, bachelor thing in a second. But for the for the weeks coming to that, she's gonna tell us thirty seconds about your life, her life. So Taylor, go ahead and give us your thirty seconds about your life. Have fun, Cor coronavirus. Okay, so today's topic is posting to social media. Not everything that pops into your head is Facebook worthy. Sometimes you got to reel in that crazy and keep all of those insane thoughts to yourself. We want to see fun vacation photos, pictures of you and your family, inspirational quotes, Netflix recommendations. We definitely want to keep seeing those videos of you drunk at the bar. Everybody loves those, but we don't want to know that you and your boyfriend are fighting again because you're going to get back together tomorrow and have to delete these posts. So think before you post. That's my advice. Awesome. Great. Thanks for that, Taylor. That was fantastic thanks tay tay so this is a loose episode we're being real loose with it we're here to talk about national treasure starring nicholas cage probably oh, wow. probably one of the dopest dopest films um we had a great time watching it i had a fantastic time i don't know how they I felt enjoyed it. i enjoyed myself but um we're gonna get jump right into it uh it was released in 2004 it's a 2004 classic movie i feel like in my sense i love uh National Treasure. <laughs> I had a fun time. I wouldn't say that I loved it. Not even... Really? No. <laughs> it was good. Yeah, I wouldn't say I loved it either. It I had a great time. Enjoyable. It's so much fun. And I understand why it's such a classic. Like, right. I know a lot of people are like, 
you haven't seen this movie. I've never seen this movie before like, today. It's, it's not a bad movie. I just don't love it. Yeah, she's just, it was a good time. Was, she's just so much it. fun. It's like she is fun. It's crazy it how go the much way that you fun. think it's gonna go. Yeah, no, I'm all the entire I'm, time. The entire time. <laughs> but see, the thing is that what I like about movies like this is that I feel like now the way that they make movies you can't possibly have a happy ending. I feel like there's always going to be something that's going to be like, ah, oh, but, uh. that and, is it, true. and I feel like in this movie, at least you get like everything, everything for the good guys gets like resolved. Yeah. She was a real, like wrapped up. Everybody Which is nice. It doesn't always good happen. in the end. It was a nice classic movie. It was, it, it was very Disney in a way. I, def I definitely feel that. And I thought this was going to be an episode of house where I'm trying to like guess along. Ooh, what, what's happening with the diseases. Yeah. But honestly, every time it was something I didn't know. Oh, I see what you mean. It was very, I don't want to say contrived, but it was very like, you're not going to guess it. Don't bother guessing she it. Has, she has a lot of like her own nuances. It's like, don't sit here and try and figure out the movie because just let Nicolas Cage figure it out for you. He's yeah. on the journey doing that for that you. That was my mistake. The movie is directed by John Turtlelob. Uh, Turtlelob. I can't say his name right. He's directed things. John Turtlelob. Turtlelob. Turtle He's directed a bunch of shit. He's directed... I don't know a bunch of TV stuff. He's protected. He was a direct, an executive. Uh, <laughs> 1997 Rocky. He Man? he produced this. I guess he produced National Treasure. Um, he didn't. I guess he did direct this too. Hold on, let me look at his director Jericho. credits. That's Here we go. Okay, so he uh, directed the Rush Hour pilot that <laughs> didn't get aired in 2016. Um, he mm. directed a bunch of Sorcerer's Apprentice. Okay, National Treasure Book of Secrets, which is the second <gasps> National it's Treasures movie. Is the Book second one? Secrets. Yeah, we're gonna come back to it. Okay. Um, the Meg. Which is <laughs> oh that. wow! He directed it. Yeah, he directed that movie. Meg. Um, Cool Runnings, Three Ninjas, Drive Me Crazy. Okay, cool some 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 like '90s and '89 hits. Like uh, definitely, I understand why he got the the kid. That's a good the one. Cool Runnings is a Disney. I understand. Well. This is National Treasure. Seems like a very blank check kind of movie, and I can see why he got this. Um, yeah. on his bill there. Yeah. So, so uh, John Turtlelab, he's the one that um, directed it. It was written by a slew of people. The screenplay was by Jim Kauf and Cormac Wiberly and Marianne Wiberly. Um, Jim Kauf is probably the most famous of them. Let's go through it. He basically has written for a bunch of TV shows. Yeah, a bunch of TV shows, it looks like. <laughs> yeah. And he wrote for National Treasure, too. Oh, Dogs. Taxi. Oh. Come on, the movie Dogs. Taxi and Snow Dogs. Wait, Taxi, Rush Hour? Rush Hour in 1998, that's great. Okay, so I get it, I get it. Oh, okay, oh, okay. So he was also a 90s, 80s writer. Okay, so why do they, all these people drop off? Like, yeah. This is just like a throwaway movie for them. Yeah, like so it really was like a like put... It, yeah, it really 90s. was put this, put, put this in the hand of people that know what the fuck they're doing type of thing. That makes sense. Um... The way that the plot summary goes is basically um, you follow an historian who races to find the legendary Templar treasure before a team of mercenaries finds mercenaries. it. Mercenaries? I wouldn't have described them as, as that. I guess that's, yeah, I mean, I guess it's a good description for, like, what the movie's about. But, again, like, I had the problem with Hitch. There's a little more pizzazz in there than it leads on. Yeah. And that's the biggest problem for me. I feel like these synopses are, don't lead on to how... Uh, special that uh, but did they ever, race is. <laughs> did they ever explain why they were after it? Simply because. What do you mean? It was a treasure. Had like generations no, 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 of no. people about who the, wanted the, the mercenaries. Treasure. It's treasure. Okay. Yeah. For the, so, but what, that's like, why they're after okay. it. But like they said, they, they had said something about like making changes, or they just wanted to like I don't know, take something from it. it. They just wanted they money, wanted I think. And what? No, they wanted it. To, they were trying to take the Declaration of Independence so that they could get the information. Then they would tr return the Declaration of Independence, but they wanted the treasure. Like the the mercenary yeah. people wanted just the money. They just yeah. wanted the treasure so they and the didn't glory. Have like a source. It was just them wanting know, the treasure. Yep. Wanting the treasure. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to know if there was more. I'm yeah. thinking what how it goes is that Ben went to Ian and was like, "Oh, I know you're a rich man. I want to. F I'm like trying to tell you about this treasure." And Ian was like so intrigued with it, he yeah. bought into Ben's thing exactly. and like funded his he was research. Just only there for the money to be right, with. exactly. Which is interesting, but it could have been like a uh, rival society or something like that. That'd have been interesting if uh, Ned Stark had a little bit more what's Ian it called like motivation, right? If he had any other reason to find it besides than uh, just money, money, yeah, Wanting to do anything just for the money. So we opened the the movie with um a young Benjamin, a young Benjamin Franklin Gates. That's his name, Benjamin Franklin Gates. 
He's played by Hunter Gomez. Now is he in? Uh, We're about Batman? to find out if he's in Batman right now. Um, I may be wrong. Wow, what the fuck? Uh, you, tell me when you see him. If you see him, you said it was Hunter. What? Hunter Gomez. Oh, here he is. Hunter Gomez, Little Mermaid, mm. Family Guy mm. as an Asian kid. Like That's great. Mm. The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody as Rick. <laughs> A one -off National episode. Treasures. Uh, it doesn't Nancy look classified. like. No. Doesn't look like he's in Batman. We open with young Benjamin Franklin Gates, played by Hunter Gomez, who's not really famous for anything. Um, he's snooping around his attic with when his grandfather, John Adams Gates, uh, who's played by Christopher Plummer, who's famous for you know Knives Out, and I'm sure he's in a lot of other stuff. Yes, yeah, none of these zombies. things look great to me. Barrymore, he was a Barrymore. It's a lot oh, he of was, stuff. He was in Nine. He was in he was nine. That's one. right. He's number one in nine. Oh, snap. He was in Up as Charles Muntz. He's the guy the, in the video game, at least, and he's in the in the movie as Charles Muntz. That's the guy, the opposite of the old man, the guy with all the dogs. Um, oh, the villain. Yeah, the villain. Uh, he's in National Treasure as John Adam Gates. Oh, we already did that. Sorry. Oh, he was uh, in the like, Xander movie. As he's Aristotle. in a bunch of shit. He's Santa Claus. He's in a lot of shit. Dracula 2000, Starcast, Klingon Academy. There's like a whole list of things that he's in. I'm not going to go down. Oh, The a Arrow. Lot of narrators. Uh, it I looks like he's narrating narrators. a lot. Yeah, he looks he's got like, a voice. He has like that voice, though. He does have that voice, so I fuck with that heavy. Yeah, tell me a story. Honestly. Tell me a story, Christopher Plummer, who plays my favorite, almost my favorite character in Knives Out. Um, anyways, he's, he, he catches little Benjamin Franklin Gates snooping around the attic. Um, and then Ben wants to hear the story of the Gates family history, so his father, grandfather tells him the story of Charles Carroll, and basically this is how it goes. In 1832, he was the last surviving signer of the Declaration of Independence, and he was traveling to the White House, desperate to speak with President Andrew Jackson before he died. But, uh, little twist, Andrew Jackson isn't there, so instead, he shares his closely guarded secret with his stable boy, Thomas Gates, Played by uh, homeboy uh, Jackson, Stewart. Jackson Stewart. I don't know what his real name is anymore. Oh, Do you remember his real name? Oh. Do you remember his real name? Jackson Stewart's real name? God bless you. Who's oh, 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 Jason Earls. Jason Played Earls. by Jason Earls, famous for Mo Hannah Montana and that Kung Fu TV show. <laughs> Whatever that was. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, Thomas Gates... Uh, is the stable boy whom this man will share the secret. So Carol told Gates about a fabulous treasure that had existed throughout history, collected by pharaohs and emperors for hundreds of years before being discovered by a group called the Knights Templar. The Knights believed the treasure to be too great for any one man, so they secretly smuggled it out of Europe and over to America. By the time the treasure had been taken to America, the Revolutionary War was raging. So the Knights had formed a secondary group called the Freemasons, had recruited members like George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, and Paul Revere, and had formulated a number of secret clues and maps in a desperate attempt to keep the treasure from falling into the hands of the British. As the war ended and time went on, all of the clues were lost, except for one, the clue belonging to Charles Carroll. The secret lies with the Charlotte. The secret lies with the Charlotte. Yeah. The secret lies with the Charlotte. Um, no one knows what the fuck this means, so that's not helpful to anybody. <laughs> and that's pretty much where that story ends. Um, and then Mr. Sir walks in. I'm sorry. I mean, uh, Patrick Gates, uh, played by John Voight, who's famous for, um, Jesus, like a lot, I guess. He's played, famous for Holes. Um, he was in Transformers. He was in Deliverance, Anaconda, Midnight Cowboy. Who's this? Is this his dad? Like this Mr. Sir, yeah. Okay. This is... Papa. Angelina Jolie's mm -hmm. father. Yep, Angelina Jolie's father. Apparently, who's your phone child? Why is her name Angelina Jolie? She changed her name from I believe Angelina that her Voight. name is right? Angelina Jolie Voight. Oh, up until she got married. Oh. To who? Brad Pitt. Yeah. Angelina Jolie Pitt is her name now. Well, she's divorced now. <gasps> so, <ca> <laughs> <laughs> are they divorced? Really? I think so. Yeah. They're not together anymore? I think they split, yeah. Great, that's horrible. I mean, they split for sure, but I'm not sure if they divorce, divorce. Wow, that's sad. But that's like a thing, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. But she's doing much better. 
So yeah, we stand Angie. Mr. Sir walks in. I mean, Patrick Gates walks in. Um, he's coming in to take Ben home, basically. He's his dad. And um, he's obviously not cool with this whole treasure business. Like, he doesn't like the whole, like, go waste your life looking for this fake-ass treasure because it's not real, basically, is what he says. Because there's always another clue. Because there's always another clue. Um, ben asks if the Gates family are actually knights. And John does this, like, impromptu ritual and pronounces Ben to be a knight of the Templar to the family Gates. Um, it's really fucking weird. He's this old dude just basically knighting this child. Yeah, very secret society. For no reason. Very <laughs> secret society. And then, jump cut to adult Ben Gates, played by Nicolas Cage. Um, your homeboy. I'm not gonna list anything that he's in. No. Besides Ghost Rider. It's Nicolas Cage. It's Nicolas Cage. That's all you need. That's all you need. Mm -hmm. And his team of researchers, they're traveling across the Arctic Circle. Um, we got the money man. His name's Ian Howe. He's played by Sean Bean, who's Ned Ted Stark. Stark. N Ned, ooh, ooh. Ted Stark. Ooh, ooh. He's Ned Stark. <laughs> Ned's brother Ted. He's Ned's brother Ted. He's Ned Stark in uh, Game of Thrones. And he's in a bunch of other stuff. We're not going into it. It's a loose episode. We said it already. And the dorky friend Riley Poole, who's played by Justin Riley. Bartha. Who's played a bunch by a guy named stuff. Justin. He's played by a guy named Justin, and I said he has the most um, akin to Justin. He's in National Treasure 2. He's in um, the he's Hangover he's movie. That movie? Oh. And um, a bunch of... Uh, ooh, Nicolas Cage? Yes. I thought it was... Let me stop. <laughs> you, what, you thought his hairline was far back in the first I mean, one? I thought it was particular in this one, but then that one just looks very particular. Great. Oh. Well... Way to skirt around that. Anyways, Sean Bean and Justin Bartha, they're hanging out with Nicholas, and they're trying to find the ship. A ship called Charlotte, like the clue. Duh. Um, they find it. They dig it out. They go inside. They notice barrels of gunpowder and basically wonder why the captain's corpse is guarding this one particular barrel mm -hmm. of gunpowder. So, um, you know, Nicholas Cage breaks it open. He knows exactly what to do, of exactly. course. Exactly. He finds a he's pipe. He's got that Nick Cage sense. He's, he's, he, like, felt it. He's on it. He knows that there... He's like, why is this... Out of all why these is the, powder barrels... Why is he holding this bodies? one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Out of... Uh, uh, why this fucking barrel? Yeah, a little his cage, cage sniff. His cage senses. His cage sniff. <laughs> his cage senses. His... His Benjamin Franklin senses, so like, gross. or his little... <laughs> it, don't call him Benjamin for... His name is Benjamin Franklin. Nick Cage Franklin. For, for the purposes of its pod. Cage breaks it open, he finds a pipe, and immediately goes okay. insane, and starts pouring his fucking blood all over it. Yeah, it was He weird. then rolls his bloody pipe on a piece of paper, and it says, The legend writ, the stain affected, the key in silence, undetected, 55 in iron pen, Mr. Matlock can't offend. Yeah, he did that. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. Cage, was... he knew just what to do. Cage, still clearly insane, starts to decipher the riddle. He's like, the key and the legend both refer to a map, and the stain affected and key in silence undetected is a die, or a reagent needed to make the next clue visible to the naked eye. Iron refers to a firm <laughs> resolution, and Timothy Matlock was the scribe for the Continental Congress, 55 members of which signed a resolution that Mr. Matlock penned, the Declaration of Independence. Independence. Oh well, my that was goodness! A, I believe you, Nicholas Cage. Wow, that, that's actually not even his lines or anything. But yeah, thank you. I'm glad that I could yeah, do a good Nicholas Cage. Cage for you. <laughs> you well, we have a guest star on this pod. Well, be? that was Nick. No, that was Nicholas Cage. He, he just left on the room. The other episodes, but he chose not to talk. But yeah. he decided to. He's read there his all the time. Every episode, episode, we have a new producer, and he, and he was he's been there for the for the past three episodes. Nick Cage has really helped us out. We have a we also have a rule that the producers are not able to speak on the podcast. So all the Though we have a celebrity podcast every episode, they're actually not able to um, talk. Yeah, so, so Nicholas Cage was there for a long time today. Thank you um, for making that We have Mr. Right. LeBron James. Thank you, Ms. LeBron James, for being here today. Um, again, you cannot talk. You're not able nope. to speak. Thank you nope. for sitting here and being here. Don't, to, don't touch the mic. To produce, uh, LeBron. LeBron. Thank you. Yes, put it down. Exactly. Thank you. Um, he's here producing for us today. He's on the ones and zeros. Thank you, Mr. James. Um, anyways. After all that, the money man Ian is completely on board. He's like, cool, let's check it out. But Cage is like still delirious and he's like, I'm not even gonna ask people for the independent for the for the declaration of independence. I'm just gonna like assume we can't get to it, and that's it. And then Ian goes, Cool, so let's steal the declaration to find the map and the treasure, and Ben's like, the fuck? Hell no. This is not the dead end. This is not it. <laughs> and then the movie ends and the credits roll. Just kidding. Ian says, fuck it, and steals the pipe, leaving the others to die in the Charlotte, which is now blowing up. Um, but they get out, though. So, that's cool. 
Yay. Yeah, good for that. That's all we want. Yeah. So Ben and Riley decided to go talk to Dr. Abigail Chase, who's played by Diane Kruger. Uh, she's in a bunch of stuff as well. She's in most notably uh, Inglorious Bastards, I'd say, probably. She's fantastic in that movie. I love Diane Kruger. Marry me. Kruger. Kruger. Related to Freddy? Uh, uh, mm-hmm. Maybe? Yeah. Do we know? Uh, All right. Direct Mo- descendant. Moving on. Uh, party in your tummy. <laughs> so <laughs> yummy. So yummy, so yummy. So it's yummy, a party so in yummy. my tummy. So yummy, so yummy. <sighs> They go to Diane Kruger, who is an expert in historical documents, and she's in tar- charge. She's in charge. She's in charge of the Declaration of Independence. Um, and since Ben is a crazy person, he changes his name to Paul Brown, <laughs> and then uh, he that walks was, like, in and talks. To him. Just... Well, no, it's actually because his family history doesn't allow for much respect in the academic world. Oh, right. Uh, because she... they're all fucking insane, just like him. When so... she said his real name, she was like, "Oh." Oh, you're, you're those crazy fucking family. Exactly. Okay, okay. Yeah, the gates are those are not really reputable in the uh, industry, so it makes sense. Right. Um, ben notices that Abigail has a collection of George Washington campaign buttons, but is missing one button, and he makes a whole fucking deal about this. Actually, yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> he really uses it, and like I can feel they were setting up a romance at that point. I was like, oh, and they're both history nuts. They're, bi- they're both historians, right. but yeah, kind of cheesy. Why is that like the first thing that we have to like jump I to? I know. We, it has to be a man and a woman. Exactly. I mean, 2004, of course. Whoa, hello, pretty woman. I see you have a coin missing on your collection. You're in a relationship yeah. now. Like, Love me. Uh, my like, coin in your slot. Yeah, let me, get, like, <laughs> let me be that coin. Oh, no. Um, a it, it, is a, it, it, it is a problem in today's society. And stop it, men. Stop it. Stop it. But we're growing, right? Yeah, we're growing. We're getting there. Um, so she's missing one of those buttons, and then uh, Riley and Ben poorly attempt to convince Abigail that someone is going to steal the Declaration of Independence because of an intrigible, invisible treasure map. Um, <laughs> something they have <laughs> attempted to convince both the FBI and the DHS, uh, and failed to do those as well. So she clearly does not believe that uh, because. She d- they do such a bad job. Yeah, they're really they're really trying to like find their words. If they just said it to her, I'm sure maybe she might believe it. I at thought some she point. was into it at first because she was like asking questions, like following along. Right. She was just no. She was Until translating. She was like, oh, oh, she was translating. And where's Bigfoot? She I was, was like, trans- oh, she's being condescending. Yeah. She was translating the big words that he was saying to try and mask that they're doing something stupid as fuck. Oh, that's true. Uh, into you know layman terms, and that kind of made it easy for her to figure out that they're just fucking stupid ass treasure hunters um and then comes the famous line after all that we have to steal the declaration of independence <laughs> ben and riley thank you nick thank you uh, nick okay. please leave the okay, podcast the thank you microphone back nick, that's great ben and riley have the cameras and prepare for this event in which they uh in which the declaration of independence will be removed and cleaned uh which is probably a great time to steal it so the night of this gala event, Ben managed. Ben made it. 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 Ben the night of the gala event, Ben man- <laughs> Ben the, the night of the gala ben. event, Ben manages to infiltrate the gallery disguised in a work uniform with Riley speaking to him over a tiny two way radio. He quickly switches to a tuxedo and then he starts to speak to Dr. Chase, offering her a glass of champagne in order to get her thumbprint, which opens a security door for him. Yeah. So he does a whole like science experiment in the bathroom experiment. He does a science experiment in the bathroom. <laughs> he does a whole science experiment in the bathroom, mm-hmm. uh, which leads him to have her thumbprint on a little condom on his thumb. Yeah, that was interesting. I, I liked Riley's character the best. I'll just say he's my favorite character. Not just because he's me, but he was the comic relief of the movie. Right. He was the ludicrous in Fast and Furious. He was oh, that gee. tech guy. I don't like this comparison. He was the man in the he chair. He was the tech guy, though. Okay, whatever you say. I love a tech guy. All right. And he was also comic relief tech guy. Perfect. Just slap those two characters into one. And they're one, and it's him. It's Riley. It was a good time. Thank you. So as Ben gets inside... Ian and his group also prepare to infiltrate and take the document at the same time. Starts. It's almost like they had the exact same idea. Wow, what a great idea. I mean, what a great timing. 
Ben gets into his pre- the um, Ben gets into the preservation room with Dr. Chase's password Valley Forge after having Ian put all those letters into an an anagram a- machine for no reason ro- for no reason for no reason at all <laughs> <laughs> for absolutely no reason he puts all the letters that she typed in into an anagram machine to not find the answer. He Nicholas Cage, high tech uh, anagram computer. Nicholas Cage is the anagram computer. He was like, oh, wait a minute, <laughs> he we doesn't need, need it. Computer. He doesn't even need it. We have the cage. It's crazy. We have, we have the cage. cage. <laughs> simply enter into simply, the cage. Uh, simply tell the cage the letters, and the cage will figure it out, man. So uh, she find, he he types in Valley Forge. And then it's just him right in front of the Declaration of Independence. But just then, Ian's group cuts the security feed, disrupting Riley's video. And with no time to lose, Ben takes the entire Declaration case and leaves only to f- Ian. Well, I'm not, and leaves only to come face to face with Ian. Winter is here. Look what you made her do. Look what you made her do. Ooh, look what you made her do. Look what you made her do. Look what you made her do. Look what you made her just do. Look what you made her do. Okay. So Ian's henchmen then proceed to shoot at Ben and in turn shoot the fucking Declaration of Independence. He's using it as a shield. As a, he, because he's using it as a shield because it's, it's, Actually, be, bu- bu- in it's actually right. encased in bulletproof glass. That's what I thought. Once he started shooting yeah. at it, I'm like, I know that glass will be bulletproof. Right. Um, and then Ben gets into the elevator. He removes the declaration from the case and carries it with him out. Um, Abigail is like a little suspicious that he's even there. So she goes and checks the invitation list, and she finds out that Paul Brown, who Ben used, is not actually on the list um, because it's a fake name. Fake? What? It's fake. What? Understanding that Abigail is on to him, Ben ducks into a gift shop to escape her notice. And then she's on a secret mission. Secret mission? Oh, yeah. Gwyneth Paltrow. Honed right in. I Gwyneth mean, style. Diane Kruger. Gwyneth Paltrow style. Gwyneth Paltrow, Diane, Diane Kruger. Kruger. Pepper Potts style. Pepper Potts style. Um, anyway. He's stopped by a gift shop attendant who thinks he's attempting to steal one of the replica souvenir Declaration of Independence. Are you trying to steal that? Yeah, she was really adamant <laughs> about getting him to pay for it. And um, he wanted to pay <laughs> in cash. be dollars sir. He wanted to pay in cash in order to keep himself incognito. However, he only had $32, so he had to pay uh, with his Visa card. Yeah, great planning. It's cash. a very important thing. Ben makes it outside, and he's confronted by Abigail. Uh, just as the security alarms go off, Ben tosses a souvenir at her, and then he runs. Abigail is then abducted by Ian. Uh, like the van pulls up and picks her up, because his team thinks that she has the Declaration of Independence. Ben and Riley chase after her through downtown Washington, saving Abigail as Ian speeds off into the night. Ian thinks he has a Declaration. He's fucking wrong the whole time. Nicholas Cage has it in his fucking car. And then immediately starts to contradict Abigail Chase for being a woman. Like, she's angry about that declaration, and he's all, Are you hungry? <laughs> <laughs> and that's like, what? Excuse me? Yeah, what? Well, what the fuck? But don't worry, Nick Cage always knows what he's doing. And he does know what he's doing, so she probably was said. hungry. <laughs> <laughs> he's never wrong. I don't it, think he can tell a lie, yeah. physically. I don't think he's able to. I don't think he's capable. His, yeah, his, his body is the other to. night. Remember? Yeah, that was like a whole thing. Bluff. He doesn't Always know how to bluff. You're right. Himself. Yeah. So in Riley's van, Abigail is hysterical until Ben shows her that he has the actual Declaration of Independence. Ben also confesses his real name, and Abigail recognizes... Mm, mm. And Abigail recognizes it as that family with the conspiracy theory about the Founding Fathers. Back at the National Archives, FBI agents led by Peter Sadusky, played by Harvey Keitel, who's famous for Reservoir Dogs and The Bad Lieutenant, and he's in Pulp Fiction. He has The Wolf. You know, he's that guy that fixes all the stuff. He's the Irishman. I mean, he's in The Irishman. He's in The Painted Bird. He's in a lot of, like, um... um Very serious movies. No, no, like, uh, mobster movies. Yeah. Yeah, he's in a lot of mobster I movies. Yeah. He's got a mobster face. He's got a mobster face, yeah. Lobster. Lop, lobster. Um, so Peter Sadusky is investigating the theft. Um, based on the bullets fired, they believe that there were two sets of agents acting on the theft. Basically, the people that were stealing it and the people that were firing it and the people stealing it since the guard was unconscious. Sadusky looks up the security files and sees Ben paying with his visa in the gift shop. Mm-hmm, they mm-hmm, got him. They got him. 
And then Ben knows they need the silence do good letters because it's a pseudonym, a pseudonym used in a set of letters written by Benjamin Franklin for decoding the map. That's the key in silence undetected from the last riddle. Um, since they no longer have the duplicates on them, they'll have to speak with the man who has the originals, which is Ben's father. Patrick is not in any mood to discuss the treasure. He believes that the treasure was merely something invented by Freemasons to keep the British forces occupied during the Revolutionary War. He doesn't think there's a treasure. He's a firm non-believer. Mm -hmm. He says, you guys are looking for the wrong thing. There's not. It's not there. It's just a clue and a clue and, and a clue, clue and just another clue. Over and over again. Mm -hmm. Ben, Abigail, and Riley finally look at the Declaration of Independence. Abigail carefully swaps some lemon juice along, along one corner of the back, looking accusingly at Ben when nothing happens. Mm -hmm. But Patrick reminds them again for the second time that ferrosulfate inks only become visible when heat is applied. Mm -hmm. that heat. So Ben and Abigail use their, their chemical connection and start blowing on it. Hot breath. That was the weirdest mo moment of the whole movie. They got so close and just... Yeah, oh. Wait a minute. <sighs> and that, that was supposed to be like romantic. right into it. Yeah. One long they breath. Was, they were like smiling right next to each other's yeah. faces. <laughs> Look up like, uh, Yeah, it's ridiculous. They both did the, the same thing. Cheek to cheek. Yeah. That's gross. Mm -hmm. And then they got a freaking hair dryer. Yeah. Like so we're screaming out. Then they grab a, then they grab a, then they, they say we need more, more juice heat. and more heat. Like at the same time. So they grab a blow dryer and they find an Ottendorf cipher referring to the lines of Silence Dugan's letters. Dugan's letters. Silence Dugan's letters. Patrick explains that he no longer has the letters. They were donated to the Franklin Institute of Philadelphia. So when Patrick finds out that Ben has sold the declaration, he is speechless. He knows the FBI will be coming to him soon. So he and Ben come up with an idea to make it look like he wasn't aiding and helping a wanted, a funer a wanted fugitive. So they tie him up to a chair and pretend that... He wasn't helping them. The FBI storms Patrick's house, and they find Patrick tied up and his car missing. Ben and the others are driving to Philadelphia, and Ben decides they should buy some new clothes with the money he took from his father's house. So he stole some money, stole his car, went off into the world. said, Daddy, I'm stealing your money, Daddy. Daddy, I need your money, Daddy. There's another clue, Daddy. When they arrive at Philadelphia, Riley, fearful of being started, pays a school child to go in and collect the child's... The, what, what, what? Pays a school child to go in and collect the letters for the cipher, spotting Ian Riley bolts before he can get the last four letters. Riley catches up to Ben and Abigail, now in new clothes, and shares the new riddle. The vision to see the treasured past comes as the timely shadow crosses in front of the house of Pass and Riley figures out the last line is Stowe, referring to Pass and Stowe. The cast is a Liberty Bell. Um, a Liberty Bell ad pops up right there on a truck. Exactly. Right He's able to see that. It's one of those where you think you can guess along and you hear that riddle and you're like, oh, I'm not supposed to. I don't know, know what that on. is. Yeah, exactly. I have no idea who Penn and Stowe is. Ben thinks the timely shadow refers to a specific time they need to be at the Liberty Bell. Um, and then they grab a $100 bill and they look at the Liberty Bell on that. And Ben figures the time is 2.22 p.m. And since it's now 3 p.m., they think they have missed it. But Riley knows something about history that Ben doesn't know and points out that daily, daily savings time doesn't exist in America until World War I. Thus, 3 p.m. today would be 2 p.m. in 1776, which um, we're going to talk about a little later, but that uh, doesn't add up. Um, in the meantime, Ian, who'd seen the schoolboy and gotten suspicious, has bribed him to tell Ian what he'd been doing. The schoolboy gives Ian the last four letters, Stowe, and Ian Googles it, finding the reference to the Liberty Bell. So again, Ian is barely on their coattails because of like happenstance. Like they barely got the next clue. Ben watches a timely shadow fall across the courtyard and finds a brick inscribed with the Freemasons symbol. He carves it out and finds an ocular device designed by Benjamin Franklin. By Benjamin Franklin. By Benjamin Franklin. Hashtag Freemason. He's a who's a Freemason? The brick was a free Manson. Yo, hashtag free Manson. Hashtag free Charles Manson. Oh, no. <laughs> I, think I was talking about Marilyn. I can't believe oh, that Maryland, you said Charles Manson. Free Charles Manson, Justin? He's Maryland a serial Manson killer. Is not in jail, my girl. Neither is Charles Manson. He's dead. Right? Well, yeah. if okay, the internet Charles was Manson? alive and, and well, 
Do you think that, wait, that hashtag alive, free Manson? No, he died. No, I'm just using. He died. Is he dead? Well, good for us. Yeah. He puts on the bifocals and he looks at the map and sees the words here at the wall with two E's. Just then, they spot Ian and his group approaching, so they split up and try and get away. But Ian ends up getting the declaration anyway because the girl sucks. Yeah. Basically, yeah. that's the end of that. Those 3D glasses were a sight to see. But, like, she drops the declaration in the middle of the road and then, like, goes to get for it. And then Riley pulls her out of the way. Yeah, and then and she, she goes to get for it again and then she still can't get it. And then Ian gets it and it's like a whole thing. Yeah. It's, like, fucking annoying. It was stupid. Um, Ben decides they should meet up again at the car, but he is captured by Mr. Sadusky, the federal agents who want to arrest him. Ben explains everything to Sadusky, who is skeptical. Ben explains everything to Sadusky, and he is skeptical. Sadusky asks Ben for his help in recovering the declaration for them, and as Sadusky examines the four ocular device, Ben realizes there may be more to the map that he saw. Ben decides that they should meet up again at the car, but he is captured by the Sadusky. Ben gets a call on the cell phone from Ian, who wants the ocular device and offers to meet with Ben. The FBI will use this opportunity to arrest Ian and get back the declaration. In New York, Ben is on the deck of a battleship with the FBI agents undercover all around him. Like, literally in disguise, just like on the deck. Then a helicopter flies overhead while one of Ian's henchmen talks to Ben. They use the copter to talk without the FBI observing. Basically, they cover up the microphones the by making this... jamming device. Exactly, and making it really loud. Then Ben walks over to the edge of the ship's deck and jumps into the Hudson River. As he sinks, a figure in a scuba suit gives Ben an oxygen valve and, sc and escorts him to safety. <laughs> we got this, honey. Speak up! <sighs> As he sinks, a figure in a scuba suit... <sighs> Scuba, 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 suit. Scuba, scuba suit. As he sinks, a figure in a scuba suit gives Ben an oxygen valve and escorts him to safety. That was cool. It was a little heisty moment. Yeah, like that. it was great. They really planned that. Ian meets with Ben as he comes out of the water with a declaration and the mm -hmm. Charlotte pipe and explains that the meetup was a ruse to get Ben out of FBI custody. Ian has made a deal with Riley and Abigail. If he gets Ben out of FBI custody... Um, if he gets Ben out of FBI custody, they will lead Ian directly to the treasure. Yep. Ben, with Riley and Abigail observing at an in internet cafe, takes Ian to a corner of Broadway and Wall Street, telling him, This is where the map leads. Here at the wall. Here being the original Dutch name for Broadway Street. Ian knows that Ben isn't telling him everything, and he has the contingency rule. He has kidnapped Ben's father and is holding him as a hostage. Daddy! <laughs> Not my daddy! My daddy! Ben relents, telling Ian they need to go to Trinity Church, the logo of which is marked by the map's last clue. And that's what they do. At the church, Ben and Ian view the declaration through all three lenses of the ocular device and see the words beneath Parkington Lane. They figure out it refers to uh, an ancient street below the f church, but it actually ends up being a person engraved on a tombstone. He was a master mason. Ian's cronies remove the coffin, destroying the remains in the process, and find a long tunnel. When they reach the bottom, Ben kisses Abigail in an attempt to apologize to her. Gross. Don't it know what the so fuck that weird. was about. Um, they find a huge set of stairs and a dumb waiter. Upon reaching the bottom, they find an empty room. And Riley wonders what to do next and asks Ben to help them. Ben, despondent, snaps and says they are at a dead end. Ian threatens to shoot Ben unless he reveals the next clue. Patrick saves his son by pointing out a lantern hanging in the temple, referring to the lantern in an old North Church in Boston hung during the night of the Paul Revere's ride. Ian decides to leave them there and go to Boston, but he would only come back if he needs any more help. One by land, two if by sea. One if by land, two if by sea. As Ian leaves, Abigail's pretty much like, what the fuck? There were two lanterns in Old North Church, not one. What the fuck's going on? Yeah, come on. We all know our Because history. the British we're came the by sea. Yeah. Then Patrick explains that he lied and gave Ian a fake clue to get away. Ben, examining the room, finds an eye symbol on the wall with a slight raised area and deduces that there is indeed a way, another way out of here. So they press the raised area and another door opens into another larger but still empty room. Ben is devastated. 
He thinks that the treasure is gone and may have been got moved long before the Gates family even learned of it. Ben thinks that he has wasted everything. Patrick, on the other hand, is inspired. The very fact that such a room exists proves that the treasure is indeed real. The Gates and Abigail vow to keep looking, but Riley points out that they are still trapped. Ben explains that the setup doesn't make any sense. Builders definitely would have cut a secondary entry shaft to protect against cave-ins or during the construction. Ben sees several Freemason symbols engraved on another wall, and one of them is a hollow carving resembling the pipe they found in the Charlotte. The secret lies with Charlotte. Ben takes the pipe's base apart from the bowl, search the bowl into the hollow, and using the shaft as a handle, rotates the hollow, which opens another door. The travelers enter a room filled with golden goblets, such as suit his armor, suit of blah 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 blah. blah. The travelers enter a room full of golden goblets, suits of armor, and other ancient relics. Um, ben lights a torch in the middle, and they see that the room is truly enormous, filled with tens of thousands of artifacts. Patrick rejoices. The treasure has been found. The national treasure. Riley is equally happy. He sees stairs to get out of here. But the national treasure has been found. Yeah, so at this point in the movie, I mean, I like the Paul Revere thing. One by land, two if I see. Everyone has heard that in like their history class. But you're not going to see these things coming. No. It really I is a fun ride. I, forgot, I would have forgotten about that. Like, reading through this, it's really so many crazy events that and, take them in, like, And they're back and to back. It's like, you can't even, you don't even, there's nothing, I have nothing. It, I can't exactly. even. It's like. You're not going to see it coming, but you can definitely enjoy the ride. I don't mm. know where I was at any point. Yeah, it was, uh, it was an adventure. For it was. sure. Ben meets up back with Agent Sadusky and hands over the Declaration of Independence. Ben offers Sadusky a bribe. Ten billion dollars, his approximation of the treasure's worth. Sadusky recites a quote from the Freemasons about the treasure being too great for any one man, revealing that he is actually one of the Freemasons as well. Ben looks down and sees a Freemason ring on Sadusky's finger. So basically, the cop that's been following him this whole time is just another Freemason. He's part of the secret society. Sadusky asks Ben what will be done with the treasure. Ben decides that the treasure will be given to the entire world, donated to its most prestigious museums and historical societies, Smithsonian, the Louvre, and Cairo Museum. Ben gives credit to the entire Gates family and Riley Poole for the find, and insists that Abigail had nothing to do with the theft and should have no bad marks on her record. As for Ben himself, he's desperate to avoid going to prison, but Sadusky repeats, somebody's got to go to prison. In Boston, Ian is about to break into the Old North Church, where the other Gates family led him, when the FBI comes in to arrest him for kidnapping, attempted murder, and trespassing on government property. Three months later, Ben and Abigail are dating, Riley is acting as the group's agent, and they've been invited to the grand opening of the treasure exhibits that have been donated to the Cairo Museum. Riley is still upset about their finder's fee. Basically, Ben was offered 10% of the treasure's worth, and he believed the amount was too high and took only 1%. It gave half to Riley. So Riley used his part of the money to buy a swanky new Ferrari, while Ben has bought a house that once belonged to Charles Carroll. Beautiful. That's the end of the fucking movie. Wow. What that's how it, that's how it happens. I cannot imagine writing this movie out. I wonder what the second one is like. Oh my god. It's about the book of secrets, apparently. Yeah. So, we didn't get to it, but we do have a Third Degree Quiz Show! Welcome to the Third Degree Quiz Show. I'm your host, Ryan Diaz, joined with my guests, Justin Vinas and Louis Capalis. Oh, so happy to be here! Um, uh, I have one question and one question only for you guys, and it goes as follows. Nick Cage, Nick Cage. is in Into the Spider-Verse. Into the Spider-Verse. Into the Spider-Verse stars John Mulaney. John Mulaney. John Mulaney stars in Oh, Hello on Broadway. Which I've showed you several times, Mr. Justin Allen Vinias. What is the name of John Mulaney's character in Oh Hello? This is less of a trivia than the test of friendship. Just a little test of our friendship. Yeah, that's <laughs> all I was going to say. He this. definitely don't know this. Well, uh, I'll just give myself the points and we can move on from that. Do you know who the Nate character's name is, Justin? I know he plays the pig, the spider pig okay. in Spider-Verse. I didn't ask that. And I know Nicolas Cage plays the Spider Noir. The black did not white. ask that. Did not ask that. Who does he play in Oh Hello? Oh Hello. On Broadway. He also plays a 
a man named John. Wait, so Nicolas Cage does this? No. No, John Mulaney. John Mulaney plays a character in the in the Broadway show. Oh, hello. I guess he's got a musical. It's not a musical. It's a Broadway play, and I've showed it to you several Broadway times. Play. I've showed it to you so many times. Well, I don't know. It's disappointing. I don't know. I'm, okay, he gave me a look when I said John, so let's switch you to Michael. Is that your final Matthew. answer? Is that your final answer? You said Matthew after that? What does he look like? John Mulaney looks like a little... Daniel, I don't know but what his character. I don't. I don't know what this play is. Tim, Timmy, Tommy, Timmy, Tommy. What's the play about? Maybe I can guess. Based yeah, on give that. me a description. It's about two old Jewish men living in New York. <gasps> I can't just go straight for a Jewish name. He doesn't have a Jewish name. Okay, Timmy, Tommy. Final answer. His name is not Timmy Tony. Uh, his name is George Saint Geegland. Oh, that's a really white name. So that is. A lose so for you. The whitest name of them all. And that was the third degree queen That's all I get. Yep. There's no redemption question, honey. Nope. There's no question that. Do I you have a redemption no question? I had a redemption question for that one time. Thing, right? Okay, here's a redemption question. Whatever, I don't care anymore. Shut up. Music is by Trevor Rabin. Don't know what else he did. Trevor. Film locations were Washington, New York, Philadelphia. Mm. Yes. And. If you can guess the last one, I'll give you your points back for the for the third degree quiz show. It it can't be L.A. No, it was the one place, the snowy place. Antarctica. They no, it, it wasn't the. Oh, maybe it was a snowy place. I don't know. I don't think so. They they filmed the beginning scenes, the the house with the grandpa. That was in Utah. Oh, it was in Utah. Oh shit! It was Utah. <laughs> <laughs> damn, was like, damn, it? damn it! Damn it! Nope. Fuck. Oh, she was in Utah? Yeah, she's in Utah. All right. I never would have gotten that one. So I'm mad. Thanks for that. Um, did you guys know that Diane Kruger did most of her own stunts for this? <gasps> Aww, like the car chase her. scene where she was like holding on to that thing? Yeah, she was like flying mm-hmm. off that, that cool. van. Another thing is that the good guys in the movie use Google and the bad guys in the, <laughs> in the movie use Yahoo. Oh, <laughs> did you notice that? No, yeah. Yahoo. I know. That's like Google the people. That's like be portrayed as, as like, bad. That's like, like Ryan Apple. Johnson. Yeah, you can't use an iPhone if you're a good guy. Mm-hmm. You, you can't use an iPhone. Pull out an iPhone. They're good. They're not a bad. They're guy. not a bad guy. They Remember that. Up. Remember that. Wonder what we're gonna see. Um, the water. Yeah. The water and the reflecting pool in front of the Abraham Lincoln Memorial and the scene where Ben and Riley are talking on the steps. It was digitally added later because the water was actually drained for maintenance at that time. CGI the, water. And it also happened uh, in Forrest Gump when that film was a thing. Um, on the DVD, director John Turtelob says the initial rough cut was four hours long. That sounds about right. The two hours that we watched the movie felt like it What was did four they hours cut long. out? What did they cut out? So many. You can exponentially twist and turn them I mean, between clues and like send them the back here. <laughs> Oh, yeah. they cut the second movie out. Yeah, the second movie was all the all the discarded what ideas. What year did the second one come out? In? Uh, two thousand seven, I think. All right, now it's time for the <laughs> money mumble. Money mumble. Um, how much do you guys think this movie cost to make? We had a lot of film locations, and we had to like rent we had out some the CGI declaration. Water. In the, uh, um. You need the CGI water for that. Um... <laughs> yeah. Mm. Don't forget about CGI Don't water. Don't forget about the CGI water. Mm-hmm. And we had to pay Nicolas Cage. And we're oh, a Disney Nick. film. I, it, it can't be more Money than Money Mambo. But definitely more than 50 mil. So I'm going to go 75 mil. Okay, babe. Mm. Um, damn. They have to pay the people. They Cage the ain't Cage. cheap, all right? Cage ain't cheap. I don't know. I don't know. Knowledge is power, and Nick Cage is knowledge. Oh. Is power itself. But the thing is that when I think about, I, I'm trying to think of like every every aspect that could have been made it expensive. There wasn't like a lot of crazy CGI. You know what I mean? So that's definitely right. didn't no. go there. No. There were some stunts, there but was, like not anything stunts. like you guys CGI need to get, stunts. You guys were there a lot need of things that blew up? Remove the fact that CGI costs money from your head. Because you make these practical movies not cost any money, when in reality they could be very expensive. Yeah, practical uh, effects are not in the laugh at. But I'm also stars, to, Nicolas Cage, at I'm least 50 mil to on Cage. Decode the different levels of things mm. that could, you know, make this movie happen. So right. I'm trying to see, you know, what kind of explosions occurred. Mm-hmm. Did they spend, you know, all this time blowing up buildings and cars? And honestly, I don't know. Okay. Okay. You said 75 minutes. I said 75, yeah. 
babe. Uh, I'm going to say 100. All right. Okay. Babe got it, $100 million. Whoa, right on the head? Right on the head, $100 million. Delicious. You fucking bitch. That's what it costs. This is the first time that you've... That this is the first time that anyone's got it number. right. Yeah, good job, babe. Is there like another number to it? Yeah, it? there's also the how much it made. How much did it make? We'll be, uh, come on. We have to get national that? fucking yes. treasure. How much, national, treasure. how much did national treasure make? Let's see. At least 200 I feel like this mil. was a popular movie when it came At out. At least 200. I'm going to say 250. Don't look, because I don't remember. Okay, 250. Okay. Um, 250 I want to say million dollars. What's the highest grossing movie right now? You're looking, you can look it now. In our list? Million. No, like, oh, I don't know. I guess. A billion? Yeah, in your list. In your list. On our list, mm-hmm. it was Hitch. How much was it? With $347, I think. Okay. $347. Million dollars. Million dollars. <laughs> Fucking bitch. <laughs> I, don't know how lo- I don't know how much it made, but it, it made a bunch of money. Wait, what you said two fifty? Yeah, I said 250 you mil. You, so you think it barely made money back? And then no, it was 150. Million? So it's it made a mil- it made double so and it and some. It made its money back, and then I guess 150 million. Yeah. Okay, so it's higher. So then you say 300, I'll say 350. I'd say it's one of the most expensive ones. God damn it. $347 million. 47. I was close. You dipped your hand. $347 million. Dollars. Yep. And I saw. I'm an old cheater. You, you, you did? He All right. told me to go up. I didn't tell anybody to do anything. He's you very heavily implied that I was going to. Well, well. that just that you are. Th- oh, you're wow. an excellent pop great. The money mumble. That was the money mumble. Here's the final rating. How did we like this movie out of 10? How did we like this movie out of 10? know if i liked it at all you don't like them you don't like national treasure i don't I think... know if i liked what case was trying to push on me but i did like the ride that i was on i love national treasure i'm gonna give it a nine a seven what do you have i was i was leaning towards a seven okay um, so we can give it an eight so let's give it an eight i think we all meant to be in the middle yeah she's she's good she's got some there are quality no fives. no we don't put halves in here we don't put decimal system it's whole number right, and or so, bust oh, so I'm oh you have a decimal get out get out of the podcast leave right now I'm just gonna keep it at a seven. But well, just let's do it. We have to, yeah, let's we have to come eight. to a conclusion. Well, I conclude seven, but and I conclude I nine. I conclude so seven as seven well. Nine, eight. Delicious. Unless we don't stand our ground. No. Eight, it is great execution. Do you think that they executed what they wanted to? A little too well, I feel. <laughs> I would, I would give it an eleven if I could. But um, I also want to go seven because I know what they were trying to push on me. I know what they were selling, but I was like, it was good. But it was, it was, it was, it was like, how do I say this? It's like, oh, let's put Nicolas Cage in a puzzle that he can obviously answer. Yes. I mean, I know that that's like the point. You want him to get through it. This is, you know. Right. But. But only he has the answers. So yeah, I'm like gonna feel you have all these people sort of along way. for the ride, so that way he can make the decision that he's the only one that knows. I, I'm going to stick with my seven. Uh, I want. I, I think it executed a American heist movie in the way of a good guy the best way it possibly could. I guess you're right. Like, they, they heist really, like... all the things in a very positive way. I'm still going to give it a ten. You said seven? You're going to give it a ten? I'm going to give it a ten. It, I think it did exactly what it wanted to do. Like, this movie had no flaws in terms of what it wanted to do. That's I just what execution is rated on. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I guess that's true. What they wanted to do. It executed perfectly. It was executed without flaw. Actually, I'll give it a nine because there are some sexist jokes in it. <laughs> they didn't execute the romance well. That was poor. It was very poor. Poor. It I had a good. It had a good conclusion. I need so, to add an eight. So an eight it is. Okay. Eight I need to add an eight. All right. Engageability. How engaged were you? We didn't take our eyes off the fucking screen. We barely talked during it. Yeah, if anything, this is one where we needed to like pause the movie yeah. every two seconds to recuperate what's what the hell is going on. So that means we were engaged. I don't want to give it a ten. Yeah, we were but engaged. We were engaged though. I was so engaged. I was I didn't pick my eyes. She on was the screen. I was engaged, this but was then there were a couple moments where I thought to myself, Oh, I wasn't That's paying true. attention That's to something. Or or like you think to yourself, Okay, no, I shut the fuck up type of shit. Right. So it's like uh, am I really engaged or am I just like waiting for this to be over? Yeah. I'll give it an eight. I agree. Wow. Right. Okay. This bitch is a solid She's an eight. eight. <laughs> She's a looker. Great. <laughs> Great. She's got something about on the surface. I'm so fine with that. She's honestly, not a perfect ten. She's not drop dead gorgeous, but she gets the job done. <sighs> I wanted the heist movie. You got a heist movie, and we heisted something, babe. Louie, mm. how do you feel? <sighs> how do I feel? 
Um, I feel like Nicolas Cage just pumped me with a whole mm. bunch of this American fiction mm-hmm. stuff that was uh, that yes, honestly girl. for a while I was I it had me thinking oh some of this stuff could be real <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. but then I realized it wasn't so I'm like half disappointed that it's not but at the same time I'm just like well that was interesting that was that was an adventure for sure Definitely. I had a good time I had a nice time yeah. okay Justin um how do you feel how do I feel I feel like my dad has been telling me I couldn't do this my whole life. <laughs> and right now he's handing me a torch and saying, son, lead the way. You did the right thing. You were right all along. This treasure was here no matter what, son. Yeah. My son. I feel like Nick Cage <laughs> who just got his torch. Wow, that's beautiful. Wow, that's beautiful I love indeed. It. I love it so much. Ryan, how you feeling? Hmm? How, how do you feel? Oh, how, how do, do you oh, feel? Oh, how do I feel? Oh, great. Oh, God. Oh, I didn't know I was going to be asked. Um, I feel a little bit like I need to smoke out of an ivory pipe that's 200 years old. Sh- that's how I feel. And then use it as Charlotte? a key. The, is, char- the is that Charlotte, where the secret lies? The Charlotte lies with the secret. I'm sorry. The secret lies with the Charlotte. The secret and the Charlotte are one. So the I secret think that's and accurate. the Charlotte are inside of my pipe and I'm smoking it and I'm getting high and as a the kite. The secrets are in you. And I'm stealing the Declaration of Independence. And now you hold the secrets and the Declaration. In my... And the lemon juice. Butthole. Well lubricated. <laughs> <laughs> lemon juice. And what's the other word? Well lubricated. <sighs> Baby, you got anything to plug? Great. Justin, you have anything to plug? Watch National Treasure. It's the worst movie I've ever seen. That's not true. He's exaggerating. Go follow us at RustyNinjaStudios.com. You can find us at Rusty Ninja Studios on YouTube. Rusty Ninja Studios on Twitter. You can find me at FireVex11 on Twitter and him at Justin underscore Vinez. Yeah. And Baby underscore J. Aura, you did Nicholas didn't... Cage on Instagram. <laughs> Nicholas Cage on Twitter. Laura, um, Louis, Louis didn't promote anything, but you can find him at Aura underscore Dell underscore Ray on Instagram. He's not on Twitter. Um, and as always, uh, Daddy, if we you... have to steal the Declaration of Independence. I yeah. want a to torch too, Daddy. Daddy, we have to steal the Declaration of Independence, Daddy. All right. This is how we feel. 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 Good. Try to smile.